Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're taking a look at the AS350, also known as the A-Star. And this is truly one of the most iconic helicopters of all time, earning such a great reputation for being such a great helicopter around the world and being used in so many different capacities. It is certainly one of the most popular helicopters to ever be produced. And if you're new here and don't know me, my name's Cameron Cooper. I'm an aircraft mechanic and YouTuber and you are watching Relative Motion. The channel all about showing you the most interesting places in the world and the best means to get you there. Here we go. The AS350, also known as the A-Star, truly is one of the most successful helicopter lines of all time. While the company switched hands a few times, this is still always held true that this is one of the best helicopters you can buy. The AS350 was created during what I would say was the golden age of helicopters, where probably the most innovation was being done. And this was certainly one of the best helicopters to come out of the golden age of helicopters. It is still being created today, giving it such a great reputation for its reliability and- Oh, get that one off there. Like I was saying, this is uh, one of the most reliable helicopters you can get. It had a really innovative rotor head at the time. It is a fully articulated rotor being designed around what they call the Starflex. And these are also referred to as Starflex rotors and can actually be seen on some other helicopters. One of the innovative parts of this rotor head is similar to a Bell four-bladed rotor head now, where it uses a lot of polymer and basically rubber bearings instead of typical bearings that would have a lot of grease. These rubber bearings tend to last longer and even require less maintenance. Then on top of it, you don't end up slinging so much grease all over the rotor head. And this has always been a French helicopter, having the original company that created it in the 70s be Aerospatula. Aerospatale. Uh, um, we'll just call it Aerospecial. Aerospecial was actually one of the companies involved in making the Concorde jet. But Aerospecial eventually merged with Messerschmitt, which was another German helicopter manufacturer. And once they were merged, they formed the company Eurocopter and was a conglomerate of Airbus. And has eventually turned into what we know now just as Airbus helicopters. And Airbus having such a good reputation with their passenger jets have certainly held up that reputation in the helicopters they create. And these truly are some of the best helicopters in the entire world. They've produced a ton of these helicopters and still produce them today. And definitely one of the most amazing things about this helicopter is the latest version of this helicopter, which is known as the AS350 B3, and is also called the H125. This helicopter has an even more powerful engine that gives this helicopter the ability to fly the highest in the entire world. This is the only helicopter to have ever landed on Mount Everest, even though it's certainly not rated to do so. This was certainly a crazy accomplishment, landing at over 29,000 feet in a helicopter. I'm sure this helicopter was stripped for weight, barely had any fuel on board, and of course only had one pilot, but it's still insane to think about doing this, considering they don't really rescue people on Mount Everest with helicopters. But if any pilots are watching this, I think it'd be interesting to hear what other potential considerations had to be thought out to accomplish touching this helicopter down on the peak of Mount Everest. So if you think you have any insight on how they accomplished this, I'd be interested to hear about it down in the comments. Just like other helicopters that have had a long run, it certainly leads to having a bunch of model options for a helicopter. And this helicopter is certainly no exception. It started life with Aerospecial as the AS350. It was designed to be a replacement for some of their earlier helicopters. When the French created the AS350, they also called it the... I'm gonna give this my best French accent here, I guess. Acriel. 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 And now that your ears are bleeding, what this means in English, oddly enough, is actually squirrel. But I think somewhere around the time Aerospecial turned into Eurocopter, they started calling the AS350 the A-Star. And like I said, the A-Star has had many versions since then, leading up to the modern Airbus version, which they call the H125, which fits more in line with the model designations they use with their modern helicopters. But they also turned it into a very, very similar helicopter 
helicopter that is slightly wider and has an enclosed tail rotor. This is a very popular helicopter too and is called the EC-130. And I think very similar to this helicopter, but it's not directly related. They also made the EC-120, which is actually a smaller helicopter than the A-Star, but only slightly. They also made the AS-355, which unfortunately I think they just recently stopped making. But this is called the Twin Star or the Twin Squirrel, if you want a more fun name. And just like it sounds, this is a twin engine version of the A-Star, and it's also a really interesting helicopter. And you can expect to see videos about all these helicopters coming up soon on Relative Motion. They also made a more militarized version of the A-Star, which is very similar, called the AS-550, and instead of the Squirrel, they called it the Fennec, actually after a Fennec Fox. And for some reason, you'll come to find out with Aerospecial, they're big on the animal names. And then the last version I think to be aware of is a version made now actually in China called the Z-11. That as far as I know, the Chinese actually claim to be one of their first helicopters they developed completely in China. But I think this is a little ridiculous because if you look at the helicopter, it's pretty much an exact ripoff of an A-Star. But as far as I know, made with less regulation. So you probably wouldn't find one of these for sale anyways. But if you did, I'd certainly be a little cautious getting into one of those. And also, just like other long runs of a particular helicopter, this helicopter has had several engine options through the years. The original engine that actually flew on the prototype was a Lycoming LTS-101. I think this engine lost favor over the Turbo Mecha Ariel engine that you typically find on an A-Star. And I would have to tend to agree with this. They're certainly both fine engines. And I think the interesting thing about the Lycoming engine is it's actually the engine featured in Jay Leno's Ecojet car, which was a turbine engine car that Jay Leno had custom made as an alternative fuel vehicle. And turbine powered cars are extremely rare, so this is really cool to see. And because two engine options is never enough, an aftermarket company actually made a conversion for an A-Star to put a Rolls-Royce Allison 250 engine in it. And they actually call it the All-Star, which I'm guessing is a play on words because it has an Allison engine. However, I certainly think the best engine option for the A-Star is specifically the Turbo Mecha Ariel 2B engine. This is a much more powerful engine than the 1B, which was the original Ariel engine put on the A-Star. And the Ariel 2B engine really turns the A-Star into an extremely powerful helicopter which is certainly one of the reasons it was able to land on Mount Everest like it did. I won't go into it totally in this video, but oddly enough, when you actually have two engines, even though you've increased the reliability of the aircraft from a standpoint of if one engine fails, typically, all things being equal, two engines are always going to be less powerful than one, because they don't put in two engines of the same size usually. And this is very odd, and there certainly are exceptions to this. This is just a general rule of thumb. But I still think two engines are the ultimate high-performance helicopter because performance from just a pure speed standpoint is not necessarily as important in an aircraft as reliability. But anyways, they now make an AS350 B3 version that is called a Dash 2B1. And this is about as close as you can get to having dual engines without having dual engines to still have that extra boost in performance like I was talking about, but still losing a little bit of reliability. But this B3-2B1 has dual FADEX, dual hydraulics, and dual other things that I probably don't even know about. So if you're looking for a really reliable single engine, this is about as reliable as it gets from a redundancy standpoint. And the last super cool thing about an A-Star is probably the fact it's the most customizable helicopter on the market and basically has any add-on or aftermarket accessory you could ever think of. And I'll try to quickly go through a few of these. Some of the more basic options would be they can actually take out the front co-pilot seat and put in two seats up front to allow this helicopter to actually carry six passengers and one pilot, which is one of many reasons making this such a great skiing helicopter. Because like I mentioned in the Bell 407 video, which I will link in the description below, one of the important things for a skiing helicopter is to have accessories available, like skis to put on the skids so you don't sink as far in the snow, or a bucket to put your skis and snowboard in when you're going up to the top of the mountain. Even though you can fit seven people in this helicopter, if you have it in more of an executive layout, I would expect to only be sitting five people in here, because it is a tighter helicopter, seating-wise, when you have 
four people in the back seat. The A-Star also has kind of odd cargo compartments that aren't necessarily the most useful because of how skinny they are. There's one on each side of the aircraft, and there's certainly plenty of room for smaller items, but they need to be fairly skinny unless you get larger cargo compartments, which are actually called squirrel cheeks. But I have to admit here, they do look a little odd on the A-Star, I think. And like I mentioned earlier, the EC-130, which is pretty much this exact helicopter, is actually a wider version. So if you put the squirrel cheeks on an EC-130, I think it makes a whole lot more sense. And look out for that EC-130 video if you want to learn more about that helicopter in the future. I also believe there's an aftermarket option to put in a really large auxiliary fuel tank, which is somewhere around 120 gallons, almost doubling the range of this thing. Although, like always, it's going to drastically reduce the amount of people you can carry with you if you fill those tanks all the way up. But best I can tell, that would give this thing a pretty crazy range of almost 800 miles. But that's going to make for a really long ride. Besides these options, there's also all sorts of buckets and slings and cameras for utility work with this helicopter because it's very popular for that work as well. And also along with the cameras, they even have night vision and infrared cameras geared more towards police military use. Also having large spotlights and megaphones for this kind of work as well. So if you are looking for some sort of aftermarket add-on or option like these, or probably even things I missed, the A-Star might be the best helicopter as far as having the most options available. As always, at the end of these overview videos, I'm going to quickly play through the stats on this helicopter. So if there's anything you want to have a closer look at, feel free to pause at any point now to take a deeper look at any of these charts. Appreciate it so much that you made it to the end of this video, and I really hope you got some value out of it. And until next time, I'm Cameron Cooper, and you've been watching Relative Motion.